Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dateable, a show all about modern dating. Today is a little bit different because we do not have a guest. We are solo, but there's two of us, so we're Just a the duet two today. <laughs> Just the two of us. We're trying something new where we do like a mid-season check-in. Just the two of us. Because we find that with our intros, we always go over. <laughs> Every it's time we're like, like this is to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Every you know, like for anybody who doesn't know, we aim for 15 minutes of an intro every time. And it's never we've never gotten it to 15 minutes. And I feel like we could also probably go for like another 20 to 30, but we oh, like at least. pull it back. <laughs> we just don't run out of things to talk about. Just like on our live stream. I think our live stream could have gone on for eight hours. I loved our live stream. I had such a good time and I hope everyone that listened did too. And if you didn't, you can still actually catch it. We have it up on YouTube now, which is wonderful or in the Facebook group, but it was so fun. I really loved we did this dating term trivia and like people got to guess. And I think like seeing people's guesses was hilarious. There was a, there was one with the term freckle that, got, that made me crack up. It was very explicit. We'll just leave it Julie at that. Julie loved Shelby's answer to freckling. What do you think freckling means when it comes to dating? <laughs> we just leave you, the cliffhanger? Yes. We're, gonna, we're not going to tell them the real answer, but we also think Shelby, our community members answer was far superior than the actual definition of freckling. <laughs> But what we did announce at our live stream was something big that we've been working on. We've been teasing it for so long and we made this big reveal of an offering called the sounding board where I think for so long, we've talked to so many of you listeners and daters and people in relationships where they feel like they're alone in whatever they're going through. And we've also found that people who listen to our podcast come in because of something that happened in their love life, mm -hmm. a breakup, a new relationship, someone ghosted them, something <laughs> related to a heartbreak, anything, a pivotal moment happened and they went searching for answers online or through top podcast lists. And that's how they found us. So we realized that when we go through these moments of change in our relationships and our love life, we do feel very isolated and alone. Mm -hmm. uh, you feel like you're the only one going through it. You feel like you don't want to weigh down your friends with like bitching, I guess, quote unquote, that you think or you're doing. They just but don't this, know. I mean, if your no. friends are like, in, like I, a lot of my friends are married with kids. So it's like, they just are in a totally different life stage, which is understandable. I think like, regardless of what people are going through, like everyone right now is in this state of flux with just this new way of dating and COVID too. So even if you're, you haven't had any crazy life experience, I think the pandemic itself has given you a crazy life experience. And it, again, it goes back into that isolation. I think when March hit this year, everyone felt extremely mm -hmm. isolated. We felt lost. Uh, have you ever felt that feeling like of just being lost, feeling like you're alone, feeling like nobody can relate to what, uh, what you're going through and just looking for answers. Yep. Not that we have the answers, but we've been able to talk to people who've been through similar situations and listen to the tools and the tactics they use to get out of the trenches. Totally. And so the sounding board is exactly that. It's the moment when you need a sounding board to just talk out what, whatever it is you're going through, but then to find actionable uh, next steps to yep. getting yourself out and like to move forward and not to just dwell on the situation current situation. And that's how yeah. we came up with the sounding board. I mean, one of the things we talked to a bunch of you listeners to like, you know, make sure that we were on the right path and get your feedback and sounding board, the term sounding board kept coming up over and over again. Like, I think that was like the go-to term and that's what started this title. But I think one of the things like we have a bunch of different offerings and tiers to really let you pick what works for you. One of the features that we're offering, it's like guided audio prompts and exercises in the form of a monthly challenge. And I think the word monthly challenge in general to people was really motivating because it like 
gave you something to do and it bought it into like bite-sized chunks. It wasn't like, okay, let's think about everything and all that's happening all at once. And I know personally, I've done stuff like this and this is what turned around my dating life. Like just taking the time, listening to this audio stuff, reflecting, making that change and like really getting to the root of some of the things that you have in your head and shifting your mindset. So I think that piece I'm super excited about. And the other area that we're really going to bring home is doing this like dateable after show, which is going to be like a live interactive event. And it will be either an event with the two of us or with some of our past guests. And the idea again is to give you interactive community time that you can really, you know, just ask your questions, be heard, talk with other people and like have that sounding board of the members of the group, other past guests, us, all of that. And of course, we also do a one-on-one or one-on-two session. We're a package deal. (laughs) And then we have what we're offering virtual coffee. So again, depending on which tier you sign up for, you get what Julie was saying, a one-on-two session, just the three of us uh, at your leisure, you know, because we can talk about whatever it is you want to talk about. Use us as your sounding board. Mm -hmm. And the very last piece I think is, even more exciting for me is we've got merch. Finally, we've been talking about merch for so long. You get discounts on merch and we have some really fun uh, swag out there that I think everyone should be rocking. We've been working on this for a few months. So these are really fun to, to come, you know, see come to life. And I think the very last uh, piece of this is you are also supporting us. And I, yeah, we appreciate you listening to us. We appreciate you being in our community. And this is that one extra step you can to support us as independent content creators who are trying to make this podcast our main thing. This is our goal. We want to put it out there in the universe that we, we want to be the dateable podcast girls. This is our (laughs) only focus. We want to be in a monogamous relationship with the podcast (laughs) and we want to bring you more amazing, awesome content and guests Mm -hmm. and change your life. That's what we're all about, right? (laughs) Is giving. I think at the end of the day, that's the goal here is to give you the tools and have fun in the process. Like dating sometimes it's always like dating sucks or relationships are so hard. It doesn't need to be that way. Like let's just work through it all together and see the good in everything. And I think that's just going to make everything a lot more enjoyable. And also just another note is we also, with the different tiers, like your engagement is up to you. Like if you're not a Facebook person, you don't need to be in the Facebook group, but if you want to be in the Facebook group, that's also very much involved with this. And you can do the monthly challenges on your own, or we're going to have sessions that you can actually like talk with other community members about your revelations and really reflect. So again, I think what we're trying to say is there's choice here and it's really up to you what works for you. And we're here to support you in whatever that way is. And how do you sign up? You can read all about this info and learn about all the different tiers by going to datablepodcast.com slash sounding board. Yeah. And also we're using Patreon as our platform. And the best part is like everything is secure. You can cancel anytime. Like it's pretty much risk-free and joining now also gives you the first month like the rest of October for free, including our first event, which is going to be killer. So excited. Yes. We're doing a dating council, like judge, judge Judy style, but it's the two of us and maybe some other special guests that are going to kind of assess your dating conundrum. So it's going to be a blast. Exactly. Safe online payment. None of this wire transfer stuff. No Nigerian <laughs> prince trying to take your money. <laughs> So what's been going on? What's been going on in your life, Julie, well, this week? I had an Other itch. than well, our live I stream. I mean, besides my, my love connection last night, but <laughs> we had some really fun um, interactions with our community members. That was hilarious too. So definitely check out that live stream. But outside of that, so this is actually kind of funny. It's kind of a snafu that I feel like a lot of people might relate to. So as you recall, I mentioned a date I had, my first socially mm-hmm. distanced date. And you had said, like, how much do you want to go out with him again? And I had said, 
like the way we left it, him and I was like, I reached out on Hinge because I realized that we had never exchanged actual contact info because we had done all our phone and video chat via Hinge. So I had reached out after the date just saying I had a good time. And, you know, if we want to chat, like, here's my number and would love to do it again. So he replied back on Hinge, like, great, I'll message you on WhatsApp. And then I never heard from him. So you know, Wednesday went by and honestly, this week has just felt like eternity to me. Also, I realized that it was really only like a week ago that I had met up with him, but it felt like like a month had passed just because of all the stuff going on. We've had a lot with the launch and all that. Right. And so like Wednesday night, I actually kind of stopped for a second and thought about it because like it actually hadn't really even crossed my mind fully because just it's been so busy. But Wednesday I was like, oh, I never heard from him, I guess he wasn't that interested or, you know, or I guess it's not going to go anywhere. Lo and behold, I get a text on Thursday morning, right after having this thought from WhatsApp and it's him. And I'm like, okay, cool. He did reach out. So I, I opened WhatsApp and I actually saw that he had messaged me on Saturday. So it was from like, you know, like pretty much like right after we had that initial call, but you never got a notification. No, I never got a notification. The only time I got a notification was Thursday, which is really bizarre. Like there was nothing in my WhatsApp that said like one unread message because I use WhatsApp like not regularly, but enough that I've gotten messages. I mean, I used it for like a long distance relationship. So I, I used it quite frequently. So, but it definitely said Saturday. So it wasn't like him, like making something up. So I like reached out and I was just like, Hey, I'm really sorry. Like I just got this. And he was like, I've had this happen with like a couple other people too. So anyways, lo and behold, this is still on the table. We have not yet made the second plan, but it's, we're in conversation and his teeth are doing better. If anyone remembers (laughs) his wisdom, he has upgraded to more solid foods and You know, it just shows you that really there could be a tech glitch. I think there was a past me. And this is again, why looking forward to the sounding board, because I think this is, this is a skill is to learn how to kind of let go a little. And I've struggled with this for years. So I'm not preaching by any means. Like I've had friends that are just like, you need to chill out and just like, let it play out. And I think honestly, at this early of stage dating, like like, it could be anything, you know, like, Mm -hmm. And like, who knows, like what was going on in his mind? He's like, oh, I messaged this girl. She said she wanted to see me again, and then she just never replied to me. And, you know, it's like, we can make up all these stories, but the reality was I never got the message. He, you know, like from my side, I never saw the message. He never like sent it. So I would also argue that if you're super into him, that this wouldn't have really happened this way. (laughs) What do you mean? I think, yes, I agree. Like you let things play out and you kind of just move on with your life and figure things out. But also if you were like super into him, this would bother you a lot more of not getting a message from him. And you would be wondering about it a lot more. It would affect you a lot more. And yes, you only went on one day. I think, yes, it was very early on, but we've, I think connection can come in all sorts of timing and shapes and sizes. So I I think it still goes into the fact that you were like, uh, I think this is not really high on the scale of connection, but there could be something there. Yeah, for sure. But I think what I would argue is if I felt it was super strong, I would have reached out again. You know, like Mm. I would have just taken that initiative, especially I'm definitely someone that doesn't wait around for a text. Like I think obviously ideally there's this equal effort happening. Like that's my ideal situation. But if I like, we had this amazing time and all the signs were there that this was going, I, I would have just reached out. Has this ever happened to you? Cause I kind of think back on this boyfriend I had in Connecticut back in like 2003, our first date, I was like, ah, oh, he's all right. He's fine. We went on a second day. I was like, well, he's definitely more into me than I am into him. And then for two weeks, I didn't hear from him and it drove Mm. me nuts. It made me actually like him more. So then I reached out and then we got together. We became, we dated for five years after that, but it was that two weeks of a break that made me wonder about him a little more. So inevitable. So I basically was playing hard to get without realizing it. (laughs) 
<laughs> so thank you, WhatsApp tech fail. <laughs> but I think actually this has happened to me though, when I was really into the person. Like this mm-hmm. did happen that I like, he had texted me and then I replied back and then I just got nothing back and I was very confused. And I'm like, oh, like, cause he was away also. So I'm like, maybe the reception was bad or like, you know, you start making yeah. up all these stories. But I was, I was, it was definitely in my head more than this one for sure. But um, what ended up happening, there was some other, like, cause he was using like an Android app for messaging and there was a glitch again. Like I made a comment that he was like, wait, did you not get my text, my photo, like all this stuff? Like he thought I wasn't replying to him. So it does happen for sure. But I think there is something, the fact that I was just busy this week, like that just will, Mm. like, even if you were super into them, it sometimes doesn't give you enough time to even start to dwell on it. I know for me, I've personally gotten into the most trouble headspace wise when I'm not busy enough. Oh, absolutely. Too much time to think. So I think it's like another reason why, like, if you're not getting the response you wanted, you just go along with your life and you like fill that time up. You do things that make you happy. And again, like put it out there to someone. I don't think you should just like be passive, but I think even if you put it out there, like you got to just trust that things will take their form the way they're supposed to. Yeah. I think that's a great way to navigate it, but this time balancing of time has been something that I've been struggling with, especially with my partner. I think like my boyfriend and I have this weekly check-in It's every Wednesday at 6 PM. We check in <laughs> just to talk about how are Is it you on your feeling? Google calendar? <laughs> I put it on my Google calendar because I needed to schedule it in. But in the last two weeks, I have been so fucking busy that I've plowed through six o'clock and I'd be like, oh, do you mind if we push back to 630? Do you mind if we push back to seven? And then we end up being too tired. So we can't do it. He prefers to have a beverage in his hand when we do our check-ins. So it's not like we can take the dogs out for a walk and do our Mm -hmm. check-in there. And I am so guilty of something I realized this week is that I keep trying to fit him fit him in between my Mm. meetings or other responsibilities that I haven't carved out time. There's a difference between fitting in time and carving out time. Yes. And I need to do more of that for my partner is it's not the keep on punting him to the next available appointment. It's on Saturday at 10. I am clearing my calendar just for you. I mean, you do it for the podcast, you know, Tuesday is the day we record. You should totally be doing that for your relationship. It's like when you get in a relationship, you just think, oh, my partner will understand when I go a little bit over with my meetings and recordings, whatever it may like your responsibilities are for that day. But it's really unfair to them too, because they're really waiting for you to finish. And that's been one of his biggest complaints about me is he's always like, I'm always waiting for you to finish something. It's annoying and I get it. I just need to carve out time for my partner. So for all the people in relationships, there's a big difference between fitting in your partner and carving out time for your partner. But I I think this actually brings up a really good point and also a good segue to what we're going to talk about on this episode. Uh huh. And one thing though, is that being dateable, Ricky said this, one of our community yes. members, Ricky said, being dateable does not mean being single. And that has stuck with me because his point was, there's a lot of people that are good at dating and bad at relationships. And I think yes. being dateable is making the time for your partner and hearing their needs and, you know, like adapting yourself to that and all of that. So I a hundred percent, this, this does not stop. And I think that's why the sounding board and all this stuff, it's not geared to just single people. It's going to be geared to people of all statuses because it really, like it, it doesn't just magically end when you're in a relationship, just new stuff comes up. And because we're always on a journey. (laughs) <laughs> the J word, but the J word, <laughs> that is part of the segment of what we want to talk about now is the evolution of not just the podcast, but ourselves. Yes. We started this podcast five years ago. I feel like I was a totally different person. Julie, I feel like you were totally different. So we thought we would take the next couple minutes to one, talk about our perspective of how you, ch- the other person changed has evolved in the last five years. And then we take a moment to talk about our own evolution and how we've changed. 
So sh- do you want me to kick it off, Julie? Can we paint the picture of where we both were five years ago? Because I think that's also- Do like we a- have to? <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's take it I back. I think we should, we should let people know. Because I think why we wanted to do this, we were thinking of like topics that'd be a good mid-season check-in. And we always talk about the journey. And we've mm-hmm. sprinkled in- little bits here and there of ourselves, but we've haven't explicitly talked about our own journeys. And I think ultimately, you know, like with everything we're doing with the sounding board, all of this is helping you on your own journey. Like it Absolutely. all comes down to the journey, the J word, the J word, our favorite <laughs> J word five years so ago. I could describe where you were or do you want oh, to Oh shit. Yeah. Yourself? Let's do that. Let's do, let's do the reverse and then we can oh, pepper in the additional details. Okay. Well, so this will be fun. I had met UA in, I think like we met in, I want to say February of the year before, mm-hmm. but then we didn't start being, we started being more friends around my birthday. Cause I remember I invited you to my mm-hmm. birthday party, even though we didn't know each other super well, we had hung out a few times. I'm like, Oh, I really like her. So then we had started hanging out a bit and we had decided to make this podcast in December-ish. We think we started recording in December mm-hmm. of 2015 yes. or 2016. 2015. No, 2015, 2015. Five years. <laughs> We're like about to hit five years, which is crazy. We didn't release technically till February, but we started in December. Yeah. So yeah, like where UA was when I met her in general. I think you had recently moved to San Francisco Mm -hmm. because I think even when I met you, you actually weren't in San Francisco. No, I was just visiting. I was visiting our friend Courtney. Yep. So Courtney Kay, who has been on this podcast multiple times, matchmaker, dating coach, UA and her knew each other from the dating world. Her and I knew each other from like the connection world because I was doing 500 brunches at the time. So I guess I'm sprinkling in a little of mine too, but (laughs) we had, um, met because you were new to SF and you were just like kind of in awe of just what was happening like dating wise like you had never really seen dating scene like this before you were like I mean I guess you were pretty single because you had moved somewhere new Mm -hmm. and you know it's just like acclimating yourself in a brand new place you were probably in your mid 30s at that point Mm -hmm. 35 ish right yeah So yeah, I think it's like coming to a brand new place, ready to just take on a new life. So anything you want to add or did I catch it well? I think that was exactly it. I was fish out of water. I moved to San Francisco on a whim. I knew a handful of people and I was just so open to exploring the, the, the city of San Francisco and also the dating scene. But when I first met Julie, so when I I was visiting Courtney at the time, And she, I was living in SoCal and Courtney said, oh, my friend runs this startup where she does these connections, um, makes these connections and events and you should come because there's a brunch slash fitness class Mm -hmm. uh, event. So we went to studio mix Yep. and I remember just having this image of Julie, like, oh my gosh, she's in her early thirties and she runs her own company and she's able to get all these people together to get sweaty and then to go to brunch together. This is really impressive. And I think it was an all female event too, Mm -hmm. right? That one was, yep. Yeah. So we went to brunch and I met some lovely people there. I wish I remember their names because I've probably (laughs) run into them, into them since. Uh, And so that was my first impression of Julie, but it wasn't till until Julie's birthday. And also this time, um, an after party for the product hunt party. Remember? Oh, right. That's when we like really hit it off Yes, before my birthday, but yes, it was like, right. That was like April ish. Yeah. So San Francisco. Yes. So San Francisco is notorious for these like really extravagant tech parties that I was not uh, privy to at all. But Julie and her friends were at a bar near me doing kind of like an after party themselves after this huge product right, hunt party. Right. Yeah. We, and, we, I used to be really in the scene. I mean, I'm still yes. in the scene, but not as much as I am now. I was going to say that was my impression was Julie's really in the tech scene. She knows the tech party circuit very well. And you, you guys were like comparing it to previous years, you know, 
<laughs> it was like Coachella. You know, you were like last year they had this and this year they had, <laughs> they didn't have that. And you were talking about all the cool shit that was happening at this product hunt, hunt, hunt party. So my impression of Julie at the time was she's out to have fun. This girl knows she's connected. She knows the scene. She's out to have fun. You talked about some boys that were at the product hunt hunt party because you had a huge crush on. <laughs> I won't say it because he's married now. Right? He's married. <laughs> it was the founder of Product Hunt. I'll just say it. I don't All right. Care. He's a tech celebrity. What's even happening with Product Hunt anymore? I just want to point out five years ago, this was like the hot startup. So like people that are like, what the fuck? This does not sound like you're in the scene. It was back then. Okay. It oh, was. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> there were multiple boys at this party, but you definitely had your eye on this guy because he's also a tech celebrity. And I think you at the time were, it was a murky situation for you. I, you know, in the last five years, we've been doing the podcast and been friends. Isn't it weird? I've never met your ex, but he's been in and out of your life for, for so long, but it's almost like sliding doors. Every time he comes in, I'm no, I'm out of town or it's COVID, you know, it's really strange. I've never met him, met him in person, but at the time you were getting out of a getting mm -hmm. out of the relationship with him. So it was a little bit murky and you were looking to have fun. Yes. That had just, it was like, it ended in April. I think it was like May, April, May. So it was like right around right that there. time. Like it must've been like at the dot of that. Exactly. Yes. So the evolution of it all might as well just stick to Julie. Cause we're already talking about <laughs> Julie is this journey that she's been on in five years and what are some of the changes that I've seen in Julie? I think first and foremost, I've noticed that Julie has become a lot more mindful with dating. Mm. In those early years, we knew each other. Dating was just for fun. Dating was for meeting people. You want to go on date after date. You were, you were ready to go out and meet people. But now I think you date with a purpose, not just because COVID hit, but I think this really hit you uh, in the middle of last year, Julie. It's like you, you, you kind of thought, I like dating. I've dated lots of people, but now I need to date with a purpose and I need to, I need to be very sure about why I'm dating before I put myself out there. Mm -hmm. So that mindfulness has been really refreshing to see. And it's also like, I think for anybody who knows Julie, she's very empathetic and sympathetic. And I think she's always af afraid of hurting roadkill, what I call roadkill, right? It's <laughs> the people you date when you're not ready to date. And then you end up breaking their heart or I don't know, leading them on for some reason. And Julie's very cautious of that. She doesn't want to lead anybody on. She's very mindful and careful of, of how she acts and the, the words that she says to anybody she goes on a date with. So, you know, she's, she comes with full sincerity when she goes on a date with you. That's the evolution I see of Julie. But the other evolution I've seen with Julie is how you've dealt with your situation with your ex. He, he's been this ongoing supporting character that I've seen in your life and how you've related to him and your breakup and makeups with him have become a lot more mature. In the beginning, they're very reactive. Uh, obviously, you were very hurt and um, mm -hmm. trying to get over it. But I think in the last three, two or three years, you've put a, 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 like a mindset around it. So you're mm. able to frame it in a way of I'm learning from this. So I feel like every time you guys break up, you learn, you like are telling me the things that you've learned from that relationship. And then you take it on to, you know, your next relationship or the next time you guys get back together. So it was a pivotal moment for you this year when that breakup happened over COVID. I think it, it showed to me how much more control you have of your emotions and of your love life when this happened, because you were, you were a lot more confident in your mm. decision to end this relationship. You know, it's ironic that you have never met him, but you yeah. met my mm. other boyfriend in between yeah. him. <laughs> I've met all the fleeting characters. I've just never met this <laughs> ongoing recurring character. <laughs> You know, it is, it is like the sliding door of, yeah. And I think it's like every time we like, since the massive breakup, 
Um, and we, I think you and I just weren't as close to like when we were dating like the second time. Yeah. Like, I think that was like our friendship. What, Cause I think that was our second breakup ended like probably like at the beginning of the podcast, like probably a couple months in. And yeah, like I was not dating for like the no. first year and a half of our podcast, which was kind of ironic. Cause I feel like it was like, I'm now doing this dating podcast, but I'm not dating, yeah. but it was super therapeutic for me. Like, I remember I talked about my ex a lot on the podcast and you were like, you got to stop talking about your ex. So <laughs> well, I just, I, I think I called it. I was like, this is not over. <laughs> I'm just telling yeah. you now. I don't think this is over. You're like, you don't know who's listening and you're just talking about your ex all the time. But I think I was, I was working through something and I think that's like the reality. And that's what I've learned over the time too. And I think, I think I've just become a lot more confident in my own self and I think also just okay, like if things don't play out. I think mm -hmm. before I was like very much like it needs to work out a certain way. It needs to like, you know, I had this vision that my ex was still the person for me. Like I'll be just honest on it. And I think I've had to let go of that vision over the years. And that is actually when I met someone else that other time, the guy from um, the UK. So we like, like having that and then retrying it. Like, I think I've, I've been able to stay open, but also not get attached to an outcome. Right. Yes. Well, once you attach yourself to an outcome, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Yeah. And I think also like, even though that breakup was one of the hardest things I've ever dealt with in my life, like I remember not being able to like get out of bed, like it was really bad, mm -hmm. but it, did change me as a person completely. Like it made me a lot more introspective. Like UA was saying, I was definitely more of a party girl for sure. Yes, <laughs> and like a marina when... party girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I still like to go out. I still like to have fun. Don't get me wrong, but I definitely was way more. And I was not in the place for a serious relationship, even mm -hmm. though I thought I was, I wasn't. And I think my lifestyle has changed. What I like to do has changed a lot in that five years in the sense of like, I feel like I have space to let someone into a life instead of mm -hmm. just bringing them along for the ride. And I think that's what it used to be like. Like it was always like, oh, let me, let me have someone. So I have someone to be out with, with all my friends that are coupled up and I'll have my boyfriend too. Mm -hmm. And I think I've also learned to let go over the years of just not caring as much. Like, I think for yeah. a while I had in my head, like, oh, I'm the only single person here. Like, that's so hard. It's so difficult. And now I'm just like, I don't really even fucking care. Like, I remember yeah. like my therapist and this helped me a lot. She's like, no one's thinking about it this much. Right. Like at a wedding, they're like, they're just trying to get to the open bar. They're not like, oh my God, poor yeah. Julie, she's here single. Like no one's thinking about it. And like, I hang out with my friends. I mean, I've hung out with obviously you and your boyfriend. Like I've hang out with friends of mine all the time that are in a pair and I'm d never feel like a third wheel. I think this whole like third wheel thing is so like juvenile in high school. It's like at the end of the day, just be confident. You're there to like hang out with them. Like I've become friends with a lot of my friends, significant others. Like I do yeah. consider them friends too. And I don't, feel like, oh, they're like, oh, why is this like single girl around? Like that mindset has totally changed. And I think it just puts you at ease. Like who cares? Just live your life. And yeah, you know, <laughs> and like, honestly, I've said this before too. Like I want to get married. I want to find my person, but I think I've become a lot less attached to this idea that it needs to be forever. Like I, I am thankful that I actually did find true love in my lifetime. Like I mm -hmm. felt very much like I met someone that truly saw me for who I was in a way I've never felt before. And I did the same for him. And I'm happy for that regardless, like what plays out. And I think it's like, if I am single for the rest of my life, like this isn't that bad. Like I'm okay with this lifestyle. Like, I think that's like a really important thing to think about is like, is, what's worst case scenario? It's like, I'm, I'm pretty happy right now. Like if that's worst case scenario, like it's not that bad. It's I'm not, not going to die bad. because I'm like single and alone, you know? But, but if you join our live stream, you'll know that we did find Julie a lot of connection. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, I saying. think that's the balance though. I'm trying to change my mindset on. It's like, I want to be open. I want to still like find that person, but I'm not desperate to find that person. Like I'm just like living life, you know? Yeah. It's not the end all be all. Exactly. 
So should we move on to UA, how I Let's think she's changed and then you can talk about it. I think for UA, you, when I first met you, you were very calculated. Like if mm-hmm. someone didn't text you back within two hours or like two days, maybe not two hours, that's an exaggeration, but like <laughs> a couple of days you would get like really like in your head about things. And I remember like, if you didn't go, like it had to be very linear with you. Like I need to go on date one and then the next week be on date two and like follow a very like linear path. Mm-hmm. And you also were just a lot more traditional with dating, with gender roles. Like, yes. I think you would not have reached out to a guy first. You would not have made certain moves. Like it was, I remember some of our early critique on this podcast was that this was like not a modern way of thinking about gender mm-hmm. roles. And I have seen so much adaption from you and also sex. You also were not nearly as open about sex, like having sex on the first date. Like, I feel like you were very much by the rules is how I would put you mm-hmm. at that stage. And I think you've broken all the rules. I think that's where I see <laughs> you transition. And I think even with your current boyfriend too, like I'm, I think I'm very amazed how you've just let things play out. Like, I think you, like you, it wasn't like an instant overnight. Like you guys were like super serious. Like, I think I've definitely noticed over the years now coming on two years, it's progressed in seriousness. Like, Mm -hmm. I think you started off more casual and you've just let that, um, that bond form organically where I think a lot of people would be like okay after two years if I'm not married yet I'm out or like totally. if we haven't moved in together like I think you're kind of just like letting things work their course and also meeting him where he's at and I think that is probably how I've seen you change the most by far absolutely I think I came from dating in New York was very traditional as as slutty as people are in New York, there's still (laughs) these traditional gender roles that people uphold. And coming from that environment and then going to Beijing, where it's like even more traditional, San Francisco really just threw everything (laughs) out the window for me. Even that first year, just thinking like, oh, wow, people don't have monogamous relationships. That's so weird. How do they do that? Isn't that just cheating? You know, that was just so shocking to me. But now I think you're totally right, Julie. I I think it's because when you open up your mind, nothing is shocking anymore. Mm-hmm. So I think I've, I've been so open with my perspective and I feel like I'm constantly opening more doors. And I don't know where the line is for me anymore because I keep pushing that line. I'm like, actually, that's okay. Actually, I'm, I'm cool with that. Even like when we're doing our diaper fetish um, episode, <laughs> both of us had our lines pushed and we're like, actually, this, <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> this will be all right for us. And having these revel- revelations has really helped me in my own relationship, just knowing that there's not one right mm-hmm. way to do everything. And there are no set gender roles. And in fact, your roles could change throughout the week <laughs> even. And I, I love having that open mindset just so I can, I can be more adaptable in, in this relationship. And especially, you know, being in a relationship with someone who is divorced and we are, he's 40, I'm approaching my forties. It's, it's kind of one of those things like, all right, if I don't give a fuck, if I, stop giving a fuck now, my life will be a lot happier. Cause Mm -hmm. it, you know, like for so long, I just gave too many fucks. This is a time to just not give a fuck and just let things play out. So having that nice open perspective has, I think has been, um, a game changer for me. I think the other thing I've seen in you is you were in another relationship over this course of the Mm -hmm. time where you just were not happy. And I think like, you stayed in that because you felt like you were supposed to have someone. And I think that kind of goes to this openness of like having that courage to let that go for the unknown. And then that really opened you up to someone that is just so much better suited for you. And I think Mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to see that when you're in it, like you're like, who else is out there? I'm in a scarcity mindset. But the reality is if it's not a good match and a relationship's not making you happy and it's not working for you, like being single is not the end of the world. It's opening you up to the possibilities where if you're in a relationship with the wrong person, you definitely cannot meet that right person. Yeah, it was pretty eye-opening when that relationship ended and Julie and another friend said that relationship was making you boring. I'm like, damn, I never thought of myself as boring, but 
Okay. I don't, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I, I didn't say that. I, I think my, our other friends said that. I didn't say that. I think I said that I just do, I could just tell you weren't happy. Like, I, yeah. that, I think that's what it was. Like, I wasn't surprised when you said it ended because yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a roller coaster, but it's been really fun. I think both of our journeys have, have gone in a way that it should have gone. I think mm-hmm. if we didn't have these major changes and you know setbacks, then we wouldn't have learned anything. So I think it's really great, this journey that we're on. And for anybody who's been with us since the beginning, tell us your journey too. How have you changed in the last five years? Even if you haven't been with us from the beginning, just take mm-hmm. a moment now to think about how you've changed in the last five years and what are some of the learnings that you can take into the next five years that is a very exciting mindset to be in. I think mindset, I mean, that's been a huge shift because I think before I always like put the emphasis on the other person and like how they could change. And I'm like, the only person that you can change here is yourself. So I like feel like just taking the ownership on your own is a huge shift, at least for me. And knowing that you have control of your love life and only you do, nobody mm-hmm. else can take that control away from you. It's extremely empowering to know. So when you get in a position where someone else is controlling your emotions, just by simply performing an action that's independent of you, like not texting back or, uh, not saying that they like you that's independent of you. You are the one who can control your mindset and say, okay, I'm going to take that information and I'm going to turn it into something positive. That's how you take control of your love life. And we're all working towards that. Okay. So we're going to do something fun and different for this, that we're going to do rapid fire questions that Uh, we're each going to ask each other. Is that how it goes? Yes. And these are questions we have not heard or seen beforehand. So we have Mm. to think on our feet. So you want to go first? Give me one. Yes. If all of a sudden we found out in dateable, was already a copyrighted name for another (laughs) show and we had to rename our show what would you rename our podcast to be oh my god I have no idea something I think what I okay this is what I would change I don't know a catchy name offhand I would make it a little more something about personal development and like Oh, creating the love life you want, maybe a little less dating specific, like more inclusive of all stages of dating. Mm. So lovable. I don't know. That's lovable. A bad name, but <laughs> connectable. <laughs> this is a rapid fire, but I think we're <laughs> digging into the psychology more. Like maybe there's a play on like, but why or something? I don't know. Mm. Those are bad names. This is clearly not thought through. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll take that. Lovable. The love welcome to the welcome to another episode of the lovable podcast. (laughs) Do you have a name? No, I don't. (laughs) That's why I asked you. Okay. Okay. Mine is totally different, but what's your favorite sex position? (laughs) Oh Oh, so boring. Cowgirl all the way. Wait, cowgirl? Yeah, cowgirl. Not reverse, but the, you know, your faces are, yeah, facing each other. Because then I can better control my orgasm. That's all. Same. I know. All right. My question to you is, how dateable are you on a scale of one to 10? One being not dateable at all and 10 being extremely dateable. I think I'm a nine. Yeah, (laughs) get it. I mean, a 10, round up. No, I don't want to be a 10 because I agree with the logic given last night. There's always room for improvement, Uh but I think I've just become a lot more empathetic and, you know, compassionate and real. And I think I'm just fun to be around. There you go. go. (laughs) Get deep, but also have fun. Okay. If you had to redo any past relationship, which would you skip and why? Ooh, I wouldn't skip any of them, but if I absolutely had to skip one, it would be, oh man, all of them are so important. I would have probably skipped my Beijing relationship just because I went into that relationship knowing that it was temporary Mm. and what was the point of doing all that? Except I did learn a lot. But yes, if I had to pick one that was the most short-lived. Got it. 
Okay. If, um, if I all of a sudden lost my voice and could not <laughs> co-host the Dateable podcast with you, who would be your dream co-host to replace me? Um, is Brene Brown down? <laughs> I knew you were going to say Brene. <laughs> <laughs> no, or I would say, I mean, I would say Eliza, Trevor Noah. There's a lot of people that are like up there, but mm. I think, yeah, I don't know if they would do it, but <laughs> well, it doesn't matter if they I mean, could do it. It's I mean, the question, the answer is you're not replaceable. But <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. That is the right answer. That's right. Uh, okay. okay. I got one for you. What is the biggest lesson you've learned about love? That you can't find love. You can feel love and Mm. love is a feeling. We can't go out there and look for love in our Amazon cart. It just doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. And just because you are looking for love doesn't mean that you can find love right away. But love is a feeling. And when you feel the love for anything else in your life, yourself, your pets, your parents, your friends, then you open yourself to feel love with a potential romantic companion. Okay. Maybe one more each round. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. If I did the exit interview with your exes, what do you think is one piece of feedback they would all say about you? Oh, that positive I'm positive or anal- negative. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to say, I don't know why my mind went to the negative feedback, but <laughs> I will say, I think um, po- negative is maybe that I'm like too anal about texting because I'm like someone that texts like <laughs> all the time and immediately. And this has been a point of contention with both of my recent exes. <laughs> And um, I mean, th- th- I think that like, I guess that's a good thing that that might be their biggest feedback of negative criticism. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and positive. I mean, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think they think I'm very genuine. Like, I think they knew that I deeply like cared and love for them. So, yeah. Yeah. OK, I'm going to text all your exes and see <laughs> I'm going to do this exit interview, whether don't, you like don't it or not. Don't have my one ex. He's ready to do it like tomorrow. <laughs> he's, been, he's been asking for a while to be on the podcast. <laughs> His dreams may come true. Okay. One last question. Okay. My last question for you is what makes you dateable? Oh, what makes me dateable? I think what makes me dateable is always being open to the idea that I am wrong on something. That there is no... I'm like not married to, to very strong opinions about how dating should go, how love should go. So yes, what makes me dateable is that I am open to being wrong. (laughs) Love it. Love it. Well, this was a fun new episode format. I mean, you know, we got to end with one takeaway because that's what we do. I think for me, it's you know, we're, it's, we're all works in progress. And it's all an evolution and just who you were five years ago. doesn't mean that's who you are today in your thoughts, your beliefs, your actions, all of that is just in motion. And I think a lot of it does come down to what you're exposed to. I think by doing this podcast, both of us have become a lot more open-minded and I think both of us have tried things with people that we would never have tried before and been a lot Mm -hmm. more open to trying and then also open if things don't work out. So I think there's just this openness that keeps coming up. And yeah, I think that is something that truly makes everyone dateable to be open. That's lovely. That's a really great takeaway. I don't think I want to add to that because it's just so beautiful on its own. I would, I would just say that being dateable doesn't mean that you need a partner in your life to be dateable. You can mm-hmm. date yourself and be a good partner to yourself. The other, just the other quick thing is I think it is putting the work in. I think both of us put in a lot of work and that work can be therapy. That work can be having, you know, m- mindfulness and really reflecting on things and getting clear about what you want. But I do think it's a miss it's not a truth to just like expect everything to work out without doing that work. So I think that's something I've also learned along the way. I think I thought for a while that everything would just magically fall in place and it, you know, it can, but it also isn't wrong and you can go deeper if you do put in that work. Listen, there are people who've been married for 20 years who are still learning. 
who are yeah. still fucking it up. So it, it, you, you just know that this was never taught to us in school. Our parents did not teach us how to date, how to be in relationships, how to talk to each other, how to care for each other, how to love. We're all learning this from scratch, but it's better to learn this with each other than alone. I love that too. Cause it also, I think this whole, this is like what drives me crazy. is like, there's something wrong with you. If you're single, it's like, people that are in relationships, people that are single, like there's nothing wrong with either. And no. it's just whatever circ it's some of it is luck, like who you've met along the way, how other priorities have played out. Like you need to do the work regardless of your status. Amen to that. Do the work, listen to the podcast. Thank you for everyone who's listening for supporting us sign up for the sounding board and give us some reviews in Apple podcasts. We always love that. We'll never, well, we think you're super dateable if you leave a five-star rating in <laughs> Apple Podcasts for us and come back week after week. We love you. We love having you as a recurring character in our lives. So thank you, Dateable family, for all the support you've shown us. And we'll be back for another episode soon. Stay, Stay Dateable. dateable.